Hey guys, I'm going to do another tutorial for you, and this is going to focus on Tor 9. First, I'm going to do kind of a stream of Tor 9, talk a little bit about some of the holes that we come across. Uh, next, after that, uh, I'm going to try to do what I did for Tor 6, but since I feel like they just put back the new holes, well, the old holes, the old new holes. <laughs> So, since they just basically put it back to normal, um, I am going to put together a video for you guys. And I want to talk a little bit about the bag. So, for this tour, I'm just trying to think of some of the holes. Probably Milano. I'm going to get a couple Christmases in there. I've, that's what I've been hearing. There's still a couple. Um... I think the other one is um, I, I forget I'm a little bit rusty on this tour uh, oh yeah Oasis so um, we should be able to put together um, a half decent bag now let me talk strategy on this it's going to come down to either Apocalypse or Thor. Um, I don't know which one you'd rat. So I'm just thinking of that Oasis Par 4 in general. Uh, that's the one hole that I feel like you need length for. Um, so I highly recommend um, Apocalypse. Uh, not so much Extra Mile because I don't want you to hit the rough because you shanked it. So, in fact, uh, there's been times where I couldn't reach. Actually, this is an interesting, uh, interesting fact. Is I've laid up a few times at the end of the first fairway when I couldn't reach there, and I got downwind on the next shot, and I was still able to get to the green. Now it does take getting the wind and probably a Titan ball, but. It doesn't put you out of the realm of possibility to lay up into that first fairway on that Oasis Par 4. So let me set up my bag. Uh, let me just show you this first off. I am going to go at this with Hammerhead here. As you see, virtually almost identical club here. Uh, sorry, I cannot play right now. That's unfortunate. But uh, I'll try to catch up with you later. And let's see here. You see, I just have just a couple more power. Um, you know, I'm going to stick to probably like Quasar ball. Well, let's stick to whatever I can, either Katanas or Quasars. Um, as you see, I'm kind of low on gems right now. I'm trying to save. Um, I'm trying to not buy gems right now. I'm trying to uh, wait until the tur tournament packages come out. And I can get gems that way and just upgrade my balls. But right now, I'm quite low on certain balls, so it's going to come down to probably, you know, a couple Quasars, a Katanas, and that's virtually how I'm going to get through this tour in this video. So, I would use Quasars exclusively, but I can't afford, like, I don't, I just don't have the gems right now. I need to wait until I can get that 500 gem package from one of the qualifying offers so I can actually buy, you know, 90 balls actually start putting out uh, you know some quasar shots for you guys and here we are I believe I'm gonna go with b52 I really don't need um, a lot of backspin in this tour thankfully for the most part uh, you see claw there Clawthorn Hornet, all good options. Of course, Endbringer Rapier doesn't really matter. Uh, definitely stick with, uh, in my opinion, Spitfire just in case. You know, there is some bunkers out there on this tour, and uh, being able to still get to the green is going to be an important factor. So let's go ahead and, for the sake of this video, I mean, you see that I have a POC 7. I believe that's what I put it on. Um, I'm not going to go beyond a POC 5 spin for you guys. I'm going to back off on all these shots. 
because, well, so the difference between four and five is about six yards. But six yards isn't going to make or break your round. So whether you have a POC 4, a POC 5, I'm going to play it like a POC 5 because I feel like, you know, guys are coming up and you, your clubs are going to improve. Uh, if you can get a couple good tournament finishes, you will get higher clubs. So what I'm going to do is kind of play more modeled towards a POC 5. And that's uh, if you don't have that yet, it's something to strive to. Uh, eventually, you're going to have a POC 5 uh, if you keep playing the game, uh, especially if you can do well in the tournament. Uh, one of the secrets to getting a lot of cards is, um, you know, top 10s in tournaments. If you can consistently do that, uh, so whatever division you're playing in, whether it's, you know, pro or you know, so with Pro, you can still get your Amazon cards. You can still get your Thor's Hammer. So you can get a pretty good Thor's Hammer. Once you get Thor's Hammer up to a 6, it kind of turns into a really epic club. So that's the point that you really want that Thor's at for it to, for you to actually be looking at this thing and be like, well, maybe I can pull out that instead of a POC 5. So just something to think about. And here you see you don't really need a lot of power at all. Um, I'm going to put on a wind ball. Uh, I'm assuming that I'm not even going to really need to, uh, and you see I'm using a POC 5 spin, so it's going to, you know, model that, it's going to model a POC 5 pretty good. Now, the way that I like to do this, uh, you know, if I had a POC 5 on, I'd go about 7 rings. I'm going to need to go a little bit more than 7 rings um, because my accuracy is a little bit higher. Um, and what I always like to do is I like to counter it back. And there we're getting perfect ball. So I'm assuming I'm going to shoot up through there pretty perfectly. As you see, you know, I try to keep it away from the bunker. And that's why I'm using the curl. And if it Usually if it hits that speck of rough, it's still good enough to... Uh, I like how this guy used a snow globe in this... I didn't even catch that into the wind. Um, let me make a note on that for this video in case you don't already know this. There's no point of using a snow globe into the wind. It's one of the silliest things you can do. It's not a long ball in that sense. Kingsmaker is a longer ball than snow globe into the wind. So um, just something for you to keep, think about. In case you didn't already know that, but I'm assuming most guys do. Like, that just seems like pretty common knowledge here. Um, if, if the extra two power is negated by an extra five wind. So, just something to think about. So, let's look here. First thing I try to do is I try to size up. You know the length of my shot I am more a little bit towards mid club here now I do like to do this shot with a little bit of backspin get it coming in kind of soft so you're gonna see me and uh, you see in between surfaces here um, I gotta be a little precise here I'm gonna play this relatively close to about two per ring here uh, so about three rings I'm gonna do it with just ever so slightly counter back because I think I might need it to kind of hold its line and you see I, I, I had really good landing zone there um, in terms of you know that's where I set up to hit it and it kind of landed there and it looks like you know it just kind of stayed up a little high I might have overcorrected just ever so slightly um, this hole can be a little uh, finicky with the way that it uh, bounces um, and to actually groove it online and keep it online can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. Uh, so, you know, don't, you know, be too upset about not being able to, you know, kind of figure this slope out and uh, groove it into the hole every time. It can be a little bit of a challenge to get it online when the way that the, hit, the, the hill is. In fact, I think it's a little bit easier if the wind is pointed the other direction. So the way that we had it, it was pointed basically, you know, kind of 
down the slope, it's a little bit easier when it's into the slope. And wow, this is crazy, crazy. So this is actually a nice reason to have Guardian is for this shot, but it's not required. So since it's not required, you know, I would just kind of say, you know, you don't necessarily need to have this club in your bag. Um, you can go for the island shot. So you're actually seeing him come in quite long, basically. This means all I have to do is hit the island. If I hit the island, I win the hole. There's almost no way you can feasibly put it outside six yards hitting the island. So let's go over this island shot. So you see I'm kind of towards mid club here, a little bit towards min. So I'm going to play it maybe 1.1 per. Um, I'm going to use all my counter that I'm allotted here. And you see what I'm doing with my spin? I'm leaving, I'm using almost all of it, but not quite. And you see full to the left, it's going to need at least that to keep it from, you know, that extra ball trail from taking over. And you see here's about 10 rings right here. I'm going to go one more, 11, should be, put me in the ballpark of where I need it. And there you have it. I'm kind of landing dead center. Uh, it's coming in just a tad hot, unfortunately. Uh, I had a little bit more backspin at my disposal that I didn't use. But the benefit of him going first, you know, I see that uh, I'm inside his ball. Now, let's talk about my shot a little bit. You saw it land about mid-center mid of the island there. And it still winded up right of the hole. So let's talk about that for a little bit because you saw the way that my ball trail was before I started to set up. It looked like it was so far to the left that there's no way that it's ever going to land to the right of the hole. So keep that in mind when you're playing these wins because that visual that you're seeing there, it after it landed, the wind pushing the ball made it do all that extra to the right. And we're talking, you know, f at least five yards, six yards, quite a bit. So keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, what I usually like to do in terms of the counter method is about four bars. For that wind, a wind that strong, I would use about four bars to counter it. Um, I used about two and a half. And I think I might ever so slightly kind of just favored the right, the left side on the uh, shot arrow as just kind of a little bit of counter curl but it was basically negligible it wasn't very much at all um, now one of the things that I want to talk about here is whether or not to lay up or to uh, go to the other side um, you know under most circumstances you're going to be able to get to the other side it's kind of a racy shot. For the sake of this tutorial, you know, I don't need to show you how to get to the other side every time. Um, oh, crap. So I'm doing a shot that's... So a POC 5 is four bars of backspin. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room for it to run out because there's going to be a little bit more run. And I'll do it with a little bit of curl back to kind of counter that wind effect and I'm just trying to put it down here somewhere towards the end um, but not get too aggressive that it goes through I, I don't need to be super long here they're gonna have to give me the worst two wins in the world for me not to be able to get to the green still so I just want to keep that I just want you guys to keep that in mind um, if you want to avoid it altogether um, at you know, no chance of them giving us, you know, two wins where I can't get to the green. You can put a Kingsmaker on, and there's essentially a 0% chance that you're going to get screwed out of it. Now, you, you need to be probably, you know, if they give you a bad enough win, you know, 15, even with a Kingsmaker, you can get pretty high wins in this. Um, I don't know what the cap is, but it might be, you know, at least 15 or 16 miles per It might be 16 miles per hour. So something for you to think about just to make sure that if you're laying up that you're not gonna and look at this 
So we're already seeing one of the worst winds starting. So let's talk about how to do this. So what I like to do is I like to favor this right side over here to make sure that that second bounce doesn't hit the rough. Now, let's take a look at this. So it looks like 10 bar, 10 rings back is going to hit the rough. So first off, I need to play at least two or three rings. You can kind of get a visual of the way that it's going to, you know, bounce back. You know, just visualize kind of an arrow going straight over from that point. Um, it'd be nice if I could just, you know, screenshot that and stop it for you. And look how aggressive I'm getting with the right side. And you can see I got way down there. You don't even have to get that aggressive. You could lay off five yards of what I just did. And you'd still be good under any circumstance for the next wind. But let's just say, hypothetically, even with the katana on, they give me, you know, 13, 14 miles per hour. I'm going to be, you know, at least going into my uh, full club on the very next shot. So I do want you guys to keep that in mind. <clears throat> For when you're playing this hole. And uh, you can see when he rotates the screen. Now this gives you a perfect visual. All you had to do is look straight up. And it, you know that the ball is going to project at that angle. So you can just visualize, you know, 10, 10 rings. You can only see five of them, but, you know, just think another five rings on top of that. And you see where he just put it there is enough, especially with a Titan ball. No matter what, even if they give him, you know, 14, if even if they give us 14 in the face here, which they didn't, he's still going to be good. So let's see, you know, see, look at this. I can still get to here with where I am. Now let's talk about this shot a little bit. Now, a little bit towards min club. Uh, this does play a little bit uphill. I just want you to know that. I don't usually backspin this at all. That's just the way that I prefer to play it. Since it's a little downwind, I'm going to do ever so slightly. Now, you can get... There's two bounces that this can come in. One's really hot. Um, I try to land about this spot to try to avoid that really hot one. Um... So you see how I'm kind of, you know, not quite at the midway point. Um, I'm going to go, you know, a little bit shy of uh, five rings here. I'm going to do it with a little bit of counter back just to kind of slow the wind effects down a little bit. And let's see which bounce I get. There it is. And you see it's kind of hopping. It's rolling in there real nice. Um, so one of the things that you'll see is, you know, guys will use a little bit of backspin and then it might be too much backspin. And then they'll have a perfect shot go on the hole, like right at the hole. And then it'll stop just short. So that's why I try to stay away from backspin altogether. The little bit, the very little fraction that you saw me backspin there was solely because it's a little downwind. And I want to talk a little bit about the ring adjustment there. So I don't even think I went a full five. I probably went four and something, maybe four and a half. It's hard to approximate, but uh, uh, it always plays uphill. So if I'm, you know, getting towards min club there, uh, you know, I, I was probably, you know, 1.2 per ring, at, kind of in between um, mid and mid and min. So I was probably 1.2, but I probably needed to play about 1.4, for example. And this is it. So this is good for this video. You're, you're, you're seeing there the other bounce. Those are the only two ways it's going to bounce. And it's all about where the second bounce hits, whether or not it hits the face or if it misses the face. So you saw mine hit the face. So you saw where my landing zone was. And that spot that I landed it tends to always miss, always hit that face. It'll run into it. Now, the only exceptions is like super downwind. So if it's super downwind there, I'm still going to aim for that spot. But I might do a backspin and a half, for example. Because I need to make sure that it still hits the face and, you know, that extra tailwind is going to cause it to still hit that same spot and it should still run out. Um, but even when you, you know, hit that other face, you know, this is an easy putt. You just roll it down the uh, hill into the cup. Easy peasy. And let's go to another shootout here so we can talk about that.
So here we're seeing the oasis, and this is one of the biggest reasons that I like to have the side spin balls. So look, we're getting towards max here. Um, I, 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 I haven't played this in a while. Um, it might be, it might take me, you know, a shot or two here to uh, get this one down. So I think my usual is maybe one back spin. I'm going to do at least two, maybe two and a quarter. I like to land on this right spot here or this left spot. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go the full 10 rings. I want you to know, um, I'll be a little careful and, uh, I'll do about a half curl shot. I like to give this, you know, some momentum getting over to the left over here, taking the slope. Here it is. It's coming in pretty nice. It'd be nice if it stopped right on that hill. Didn't quite, but the shot itself, not too bad. 3.63. I'll take it. And like I mentioned before, I think I like usually, and uh, I just want to, you know, this fairway is a little divided. I want to talk about this real fast if I can. Um, this division that you're seeing uh, on that fairway, this, this way it seems to bounce straight. When you get on this other half, it seems to bounce kind of like this. And I just want to point this out for you that... You know, it's right kind of down the middle of this fairway. And that's why you want to, and there you're seeing it a little bit, um, that it just kind of projects the ball to the right. So that's why I like to favor that left side of this fairway. That left side of the fairway projects it straight. So all I have to do is curl it. And you're seeing him hit that spot too. Now he's coming up and he's going a little bit long. It's not going to come off the hill. I'm going to win the shootout. So... Just wanted you guys to be aware of that and, uh, you know, always be thinking, you know, it's downwind. I, I was being, you know, at least 10 or 11 rings there on my adjustment. Plus I added the extra backspin because it's so much downwind that it's going to change that projection. Just like you saw in that crosswind. It's doing the same thing, but instead of with a crosswind, this time it's doing it downwind. So it's going to come in way with way more speed. And you saw that the way that I played it, it was relatively pretty good. Um, uh, I was probably half a yard from just funneling it down on the right side of that whole hill where it goes right at the hole. So you see what I try to do there? Uh, I try to hit the left side of the fairway. Now you can play the right side of the fairway, but uh, you need to do it with full curl, usually full side spin. Um, but uh, my suggestion is avoiding the right side of the fairway at all costs on that hole. So let's see if we can't grab another opponent here. And I would try to stream until, you know, maybe like around 5 o'clock. I don't really have a, a timer on this thing to kind of slow me down. Um, now, this is an interesting hole because there's two ways that I like to play this. One, sometimes I like to go to the other side and give myself a chance at reaching this green in two. Um, it's kind of hard to execute. Right now I don't have the Titans. Um, and you know, I didn't get the most favorable wind. So maybe on this method, I'll just lay up here, I guess. Um, I like to just beat it over no matter what and just try to hop the bunker. Um, if I was playing like myself personally, um, for real, that's kind of what I'd do. Um, what I'm going to do here, you see about three backspin. I'm just trying to judge, you know, how, how much I can get. How much, you see that six wind, but it's kind of pointed. It's probably going to pull at least, you know, three or two or three rings down. So I'm looking about six rings down just to see how my shot is. Um, and here's two backspin. Uh, I think I'm going to go at it with two backspin. Just a tiny bit of power, ever so slight. Um, maybe right in there somewhere. Let's just see if this is in half decent. A little conservative, but it'll do. I got to get my bearings straight a little bit back on this hole because 
I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really one of those guys that takes a lot of notes on things, or really any notes. Um, I like going off feel for sure. Uh, you know, it would be nice to have those notes to where I could just reference it and say, okay, well, this is my typical shot with no wind. Since it's downwind, I'll just take off two rings from that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just play for fun, so I don't get too, you know, crazy over this game to think about all the, you know, ways to be the best or whatever. Like, none of those are really thoughts of mine, so... Let's take a look here. Now, the way that I like to do this, definitely with some side spin. So first off, I like to point on the fairway just to see how my natural ball flight is going to roll out. So here we're seeing a lot downwind. Um, I know I'm going to start to run out of fairway here. So here I'm going to do, you know, I'm going off the right of my bullseye here. And I'm just trying to visualize you know, 11 degrees up from the right of my bullseye. And it looks pretty good about this spot. I'm going to go three full bullseyes from that, three and a half full bullseyes from that spot. I'm going to do this max slice. And it should land on the right side of the fairway somewhere. And hopefully, see, just kind of thread up through there. Now, in terms of curl with this, I you know, I usually go about three and a half full bullseyes there. And, but I use, I go off the right of my target, like if I'm doing uh, a right hook, then I'll go off the right of my bullseye and just kind of stack the bullseyes. So I'm not using the center, so I don't want you to just, you know, use the center and say, I'm going three and a half bullseyes. Like, I go off the actual physical bullseyes themselves and, and stack them on top of each other. And the easiest stacking method that I know is to uh, you know stack first because it just it, for something about that method that just makes it work for me. Um, mo you know most of the shots are like even. It's usually like three bullseyes. The the sniper and uh, Thor's uh, have the hammerhead are the only two that are like half bullseyes for me for my entire bag. Everything else is either two full bullseyes. Well, Apocalypse has been uh, two and a half as well. So, but uh, yeah, that's just the method that I like to use. And let's say we're let's see where we're looking. Okay, so we're getting a little bit towards max here. Um, I am going to get a little aggressive towards the fringe here. Do this with about one backspin. Hopefully, it has enough run out here. Actually, I'm going to switch surfaces here, just so you know. Switch to this surface. It looks like it lines up a little better. Now, I probably want to go about 1.8 per ring. So, 5 is going to be 9. So, if I go 5, I'm at 9 miles per hour. And then I'll go an extra one, a little bit extra on top of that. And I'll just counter it ever so slightly. Ah! Great ball. I have a feeling... And I'm going to miss out to the left because of that great ball. And sure enough, I may have held that out with a perfect ball. But I'm not worried about holding it out because I would rather us get to a shootout and hopefully see a different wind and hopefully be able to talk about that a little bit. So we can just kind of dissect this course a little bit since it's been a long time since I've put out content on the original Tour 9. It's, it was only the... Uh, it was only the, the Christmas tur tournament holes that uh, I've recently put out Tour 9 content on. And uh, I wanted to get definitely a lot more Tour, tour 9 on here. Because this is, you know, a hot button topic. And look here what we're looking at. Very similar win, but this time it has some left in it too. So I want to, you know, just talk about this. So uh, you saw how much I curled last time. 
Uh, I'm not going to curl that much this time. Uh, and you saw that... So here I'm not going to curl like the way that this guy is. So first off, let's, let's kind of see what his landing zone is first off. Okay, so he's kind of using mine. Um, so you saw what I did last time. It was probably like a half curl. I'm going to probably do a quarter curl this time. And again, same thing. You're seeing that guy come in long. I'm going to try to avoid coming in long by putting more backspin on my shot. So I'm going to try to land it more in here. And I might even use just a little bit more since it's a little bit stronger than last time. So kind of in here. Um, let's see if I can't, you know, I'm going to be generous with my, uh, with how much I correct here again. So again, instead of going 12, I'm going to go 13. And on top of that, I am going to have just a little quarter curl here. Not quite as much as last time because I don't want to start bringing in uh, that rough over there. And sure enough, you're seeing it. I just pulled to the other side of the hill this time. So it was a little bit too much curl. Just a tad bit. But you see, speed-wise, I got it down. And I haven't hit these shots in months. So I'm just glad. Oh, shoot. I probably can't do that. I think it's probably... Uh, well, you know, this might actually be live opponents, to be honest with you. Because I'm finally getting to the point where, uh... Well, it's spinning so long, though. It, it's, uh... It's hard to say one way or another if I'm playing live or not. But, uh... As much as it's spinning, you have to assume that you're playing replays honestly but this is the first you know I'm whereas six I knew it was replays I'm finally getting to where I could actually potentially be playing guys who actually are in tour seven and have you know three to five thousand trophies they could potentially match us like it's not out of the realm of impossible whereas in tour six like literally a guy around my trophy count has to come in at the same time that I am. And why would they be playing Tour 6? They would probably be playing Tour 11. So... Now... Let's talk a little bit about this hole. So I do not like going for that left fairway. It is extremely risky. In fact, you're seeing why it's risky right there. I cannot believe that's back in the fairway. That was a super, super, super lucky drive. That could have went either way. It could have stayed over there. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I don't like to go for there, over there. So uh, there's an alternate shot here. And let's talk about that. Um, I'm going to do it with a full... Yeah. So it looks like, you know, about two top spin, more or less. Um, I'm going to use my bull spit, uh, my bullseye, the right of my bullseye. I'm going to put right in the rough, just barely. Um, and, you know, the wind's going to restrict it from doing that. Now I'll stack another bullseye on top of that. And on top of that, I'd usually go half a bullseye. I'm going to come in just ever so slightly because it's into the wind, and it's not going to hook as much as I want it to. <clears throat> and you're seeing no real threat of the rough doing it this way. Um, I'm right in the middle of the fairway. Didn't didn't start flirting with the uh, right edge there or anything um, but I just want to make a little bit of a note there on that slice that I just did for normally for a POC 5 or whatever I would go two and a half uh, full bullseyes and, and using the way that I stack the bullseyes not using the rings that's why I try not to talk even use the word rings because um, I don't want to 
confuse the two because I'm really I'm not using the you know the center of the ring system with my aiming I'm using the outer edge bullseyes so I just want to say when you're into the wind and you can see that was virtually with the way that it's hooking it's virtually straight into the wind with the way that it's hooking so technically it's only gonna hook about two full bullseyes into the wind like that now I just to be on the safe side you know I told you I brought it back in but I probably only brought it back in two two and a half rings so I was being a little conservative but as you can see you know conservative works like I still had at least three or three or so bullseyes that uh, you know before I started running into trouble there so now let's talk a little bit about this shot so what I like to do here is kind of bring it in from uh, left to right you see I'm more towards min club here um, so instead of going the usual 10.5 I'll go about eight rings more or less and you see how I'm gonna be so far to the right oh crap I great balled it left definitely didn't want to do that but let's see how it comes in before I get too worried up oh, it's to the right okay so not bad so you see how much curl I'm putting on it because two reasons first I was lining up left of the target so half of the curl was for that the other half is the way the winds pointed it's kind of like I said when it's when it's that point pointed that far it's gonna be at least three extra backs like side spin bars that you need to counter that minimum so you're seeing me put a lot of curl on for, for those two factors they're kind of like additive like I'm doing half of the half of the curl for that half because I was aiming to the left so let's see what we can get in terms of a wind here another down well I don't think we've had downwind so downwind I'm gonna jam this thing as, as hard as I can get it to come back kinda of like you're seeing this guy do and uh, notice how he has his shot arrow pointed just ever so slightly to the left so there he's going to uh, he's going he went what did he just go 9.6 rings he just went about 10 I think that's a little over correction for well he did just great ball it so that might help it come back a little bit you're seeing him hit the beginning that's actually pretty well done overall uh, to be able to stop that short of the hole is quite a risky shot because you see how close he had to get to the front there so let's take a look at mine I'm gonna to have to go all the way back to probably min club to get this about right so first I'm gonna get you know a little bit I'm gonna cheat it a little bit like he did um, you know I, I know it's naturally going to on its own kind of work its way back to the right so I'll probably pull straight back this time you see how it's already set up just left of the hole so here, uh, you know, I'm going to go more of the, those eight rings that I was mentioning before. There's, uh, you know, a nice full five. Uh, there's a couple more. There's about eight rings there. Ah, oh, Jesus. What is with me in great balls right now? So there you're seeing I'm hitting the very front, and you're seeing it run out. This time it's going to the hole. It's uh, a little bit uh, short again. And like I mentioned, you know, to stop it short of the hole is uh, quite the tricky shot because your uh, kind of bailout is to assume that you're going to do um, uh, kind of more of the middle of the uh, island to, to kind of increase the margin of error you can do on the shot. But what you see I'm doing is I'm cheating it back to the front, which kind of narrows that margin like you can't go as far left you can't go as far right and you can't land short either whereas in the middle of the bullseye you have a high tolerance in all those directions every direction north south east and west from the center of the bullseye from the center of that island is the smartest way to play it 
all the time as a normal shot because your tolerance for error is at its hot greatest point. And when we pull back towards the front of that bullseye, that error tolerance starts to decrease in every direction except north. That's the only directions where the uh, error tolerance there increases. So, um, you know, that might have a tendency to make you land it long towards the center of the bullseye. If you land it at the center of the bullseye, you're not stopping it short of the hole. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see if we can't do this. I haven't done this hole in quite a while either. So, you know, I have a feeling that if you eagle this sucker, you're going to win a lot in Tour 9. That's just kind of my guess. Um, and again, this could be a live opponent. It could be a replay. Uh, not really sure. I wasn't really paying attention to how long it was spinning. But you see a guest come in around my trophy count. It can be either. It can literally be either. And you're seeing him just hop that bunker. Pretty fortunate break there. You never want to cheat it like that, especially downwind. I mean... Lots of games played. Uh, I think I usually use a little bit of top spin on this. And of course, I usually always create the momentum over to the left to make sure I can kind of groove that other fairway. Um, and you know, I might land a little bit more aggressive. And here I'm going to counter it because of the way that the wind's pointed. And here, as you're seeing, you know, I feel like I can go relatively full here. And I'm probably going to, uh, you know, counter that wind, like I was mentioning, just kind of in this direction. And there you see me landing very aggressively. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create not enough topspin to get into that rough. And sure enough, I stopped it. Uh, this is a great time to probably have put on a Kingsmaker or Titan. As you can see, I'm very tight on my Titans. I don't really have them. Um, I'm assuming with that wind, neither of us is going to get there. Um, you can get there. It just probably has to be an absolute perfect shot. It has to roll up through that left rough, cut through the two bunkers, and not go in either of them. And it slopes to the left, so it likes to go in that left one. But the fairway tends to have weird bounces on its own. So it's like a little crown. If you land in certain spots, it'll shoot the ball left. If you land on the other side, it shoots the ball right towards the center bunker. So very, very challenging shot that they put together here. This has got to be... Um, especially when we're talking wins like this, um, one of the most challenging shots in the game today. So, you know, I don't put a lot of faith in, you know, executing this right. This is kind of, you know, what I'm talking about here. And I'm probably landing it right in the spot where it's going to go towards this other bunker. You have to thread in between there just perfectly. And I'm assuming, you know, more times than not, they're probably going to, unless the wind's super favorable, they're probably going to match you up with replays where birdie will get you to the shootout. But if you're actually playing replays, um, maybe not. But, uh, and again, I, I'm not really too sure if this is live. I wasn't really paying attention to how long it was spinning, so no real indicator that I can give. What was that? Looked like some kind of glitch, but it's okay. So, let's talk a little bit about this pitch. First off, I haven't played this in quite some while, so I'm just wondering about what my adjustment needs to be, and it's very, very low. It's under a ring. I can let you know that for certainty is that this is going to be under a ring adjustment. So you see, I'll just kind of set it up in a place where it's pretty decent. Um, and I'll probably go, because um, I, I actually think it's about kind of half a ring. So you're going to see me go 
about half a ring. And now we're seeing perfect ball. Now this is very hard to actually get it to roll out good. You're seeing my, my aim was pretty good. Um, that's not to say that, you know, it wasn't very good. This is an extremely hard pitch. It just likes that there's so many bumps on, and ridges on this green. Even if I do a perfect correction, the ball trail can just completely fluctuate just by a fraction of a centimeter on the green one way versus another way. So something that you want to keep in mind when you're doing the, the, those shots there. And, uh, but uh, if you want to know a little bit more about how I came up with my uh, correction there for that, was it a bunker shot? For that bunker shot, um, I put together a tutorial video for you guys to kind of help estimate distance. So if you feel, feel free to check that out. It is titled with, uh, you know, the clubs in mind. So it's titled with sand wedge, wedge, and rough iron in the video. And so there's only one video I have like that. So you should be able to find it that way. Now, I am a little rust. I'm going to probably be a little rusty on this hole. See, I'm going down towards min. I believe I like to do full back spin, but I really just don't remember. Um, I like to play it more out towards the middle of the fairway here. And, you know, I'm coming towards min club here. So I am going to go maybe six rings as opposed to the 7.4. I always go max curl. Let's just see if I can't get this to shoot up towards the hole. It's too much curl and too much speed. So... Uh, you know, I'm going to be a little rusty on this one. I was assuming I was going to be rusty on the other ones, but this one is very challenging. Um, that is the shot that I like to do. Um, it looks like it just created a little bit too much momentum. So with, the, with all the hook that I put on that, the curl, plus being downwind, you're seeing the ball just project with so much more power than what it shows. So when you see me aiming, you know, you only need to get it probably to the front of the green. You need your ball trail to show on the front of the green. And I just had a little bit too much, though. But I'll learn for that for next time. And again, I try to land very centered in the fairway on that, uh, on that bounce when I'm doing this shot. And you're seeing this one's a lot better done. Wow. I wonder if I actually was playing a replay or not, because I feel like... It might not give me a 1.2 yard <laughs> replay to shoot up against. It does happen. Um, but that is a very hard hole to hit it to a yard. So, uh, you know, you can kind of use both of those shots there to kind of model off of. But I highly recommend that shot. And, uh, you know, hopefully next time that I come up to it, uh, you know, I make the necessary adjustments. So, for example, if I need to uh, say the wind's coming in hard left to right, then, you know, I might start to cheat my aim a little bit. Plus, you know, I'll make sure that I have all that full curl on for sure. Like, I'll be holding it off the edge of the screen, basically. Um, and it looks like when it's pointed that way, you know, I can lay off the curl just ever so slightly. Um, I just need to change my... Oh, you see, with that shot, the way that it was coming in so hot was because it's downwind. So it just needs to be one of those factors that I remember for next time. Because it looked like I probably had, you know, the adjustment down. I just didn't factor in those other factors. The way that the wind and curl were affecting the ball was just a little bit different. So, okay. So this is the type of wind that I like to see. Um, I'm going to, once again, uh, you know I'm going to go for this sucker. Uh, I'm really not sure how much top's been put on it. Um, you know, I'm going to totally guess here. And I'm doing four rings. Now, what I'm trying to do is avoid it from, once it gets to the other side, running through. So, you see me even taking off ever so slightly. I'm just trying to get a visual here. 
and I want to slow the ball down once it gets to the other side. And another thing that I like to do is I like to cheat it over here to the left here. You see me kind of playing the left side of this fairway. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Too much. The reason that I like to do this is because it optimizes the amount that I can hook it on the second shot. Now, this is really going to be frustrating if I just put it in the rough there and I actually get a shot, a wind, that would actually let me put it on the green. That's really going to frustrate me. So I'm really hoping that that case doesn't come up. Um, and I feel like this is without question um, probably a replay. Um, the biggest indicator I have this time is he saw how little topspin I put on mine and is doing nothing like that whatsoever. And so you can easily see that if you hit that other side of the fairway that it's going to run through into the rough with that much topspin. So it's just a weird thing that I would just give that guy the blueprint and then he would just totally kill it with the topspin. And sure enough, we probably got a wind that I could have got really aggressive with and hit a very good shot. So this is very frustrating. I really wanted to be able to pull that shot off. Now let's talk about what I want to do here to kind of groove this up here. Um, I am going to be a little conservative with where I make my land zone. So I'm using the right of my bullseye. And I'm going to play the wind, which is going to be about three rings. And then on top of this, I'm going to stack at least, at minimum, 2.5 bullseyes. Now, I'm going to do this with some counter, but I'm going to take off some of the counter. Because I want this to kind of project kind of straight, and I don't want it to be hooking too much where I hit the rough. So you're just seeing me kind of thread it up through there. Kind of right down the middle. And there you have it. Whereas if I did full counter curl, it might, you know, favor the left side there. And if I would have went full curl to the right, it might have went into the bunker or towards the bunker anyway. So I'd rather, you know, play the safe shot just out into the middle of the fairway. You know, favoring the left side a little bit is always a good thing because it kind of opens up your angle a little bit. And as you see, both of these shots, well done. And let's see if we can't get this one to go in this time. Now, I should be to claw distant. Oh, oh, I'm going to be right towards max claw here. Now, I would usually do at least one full backspin here, maybe two and a quarter, or up to two. Um, but you see, this is very, very into the wind. So you're going to see me take off all that extra that I would usually do. And I'm going to play this right at max. And max is going to be relatively close to eight rings here. And you see I am going into power. And there's my eight rings. On top of that, I'm going to counter it because of how much that wind is pointing to the left. And it looks like I countered it ever so slightly too much. I'm just kind of playing around with a couple different methods because sometimes I like this counter method. Sometimes I like to just overcorrect. So what overcorrecting does is you overplay the wind and then that extra ball trail just kind of guides it back to the hole. I've been messing around with playing more of the exact land number and just countering it just so I can see well how much counter does it really take I'm just trying to decide which which me method I'm better at and I find I'm about equal at both of them uh, so I miss you know about the same amount both times but uh, the one thing that I can say is when I when I do this where I'm curling it I like the way that the ball comes in a little bit better because it comes more in on its natural line, which is the ball trail that you see it intended. 
So if it uses the same ball trail that you're you're seeing, even though you're seeing for me, it's not claw. Like I I don't really see the ball rolled out. Maybe if I put thorn on, I would. Um, but you know I can just visualize what it, the ball's supposed to do by the fact that you know the third hop I'm just putting you know right in front of the hole. If I can just you know visualize. I know it's just going to run out two yards and stop, or you know three yards, two to three yards, and then it's just going to stop. Like I just know it's going to do that. So if I know it's going to do that, I don't need the ball guide. I just need to perf perfect that landing zone. Now, let's talk about this shootout hole. Now, I'm pretty positive you need to overcorrect here, and I'm just trying to think of my, I really don't remember my lineup, but the, I know that I go for this shot. And I think it's, with top spin, I think it's a little bit of right spin usually. Yeah. So I usually use right spin with this shot. Here I'm not going to because it's pointed to the right. And here you're seeing about a five, what was that, five to six yards. Now I do want to mention that this, this shot is a little downhill, so you need to overcorrect. So um, I, I, I do think you're more towards mid club here, pushing towards max. And that was actually almost perfect. Um, now he almost hit the fair. He almost hit the uh, the rough there, or he almost hit the the green. And this is kind of you know what I kind of expect is to you know have to kind of shoot my ass off a little bit here <laughs> to uh, to beat replays. So you're gonna see me do more or less, you know, kind of same thing. Now you see how I'm grooved in here, and it's just kind of shooting towards the hole. So I'm going to try to use that to my advantage. Now I'm probably going to go, since it is, like I mentioned, you know, a downhill shot. I'm going to go those six rings. So make sure I go those six rings. On top of that, I'm just going to ever so slightly curl it back to take more of that natural shape. That you're seeing it already. Ah! So six rings isn't enough. Obviously, you know, you need to go, since it is downhill... Now, I was thinking since I'm more towards min cl uh, mid club, but I might actually be a little bit towards max club there. So you're seeing me launch that a little bit far. Of course, I can open this. So it looks like you're going to want at least an extra ring adjustment. I didn't miss by much, but it's probably a 20% addition. So I'm trying to think, what was that win? Six, seven? So had I gone, you know, an extra ring and a half, it was probably spot on. That's 20%. So keep that in mind for when you're playing that hole next time. And again, like since, you know, I don't play these tours very often, uh, I don't have a cut sheet from when I did play them. Uh, there's always a little bit of getting back into it before I can actually execute some of these shots. So, but you can see what I did. You can see the mistake I made. And I was off by a ring and a half on my adjustment. Being a ring and a half off, that's 20% more wind. So you need to play 20% more wind. That's just the way it is. Learning from your mistakes is the best way to, uh, you know, tackle this game and overcome the obstacles. Knowing what you did wrong and thinking about how wrong you were. So you see me there. I'm wrong by, I, I basically ran, landed a ring and a half farther than where I set up to land it. So, you know, I know for next time I need to go a ring and a half more than whatever I just adjusted. And that's around 20%. So next time. Expect me to hit a very good shot. And uh, the way that you view this game should be a similar fashion. Am I like that's one of the things that I suggest is always thinking about these things and uh, trying to better your game, making those minor adjustments. You know, I think law of average, especially you know, the more games I do of this. You know, I'm going to remember and have enough short-term... Like, I can, you know, grind out through here, and I should be good. Now, 
Let me put on a Kingsmaker robot. I think I need a Titan Ball. Crap. This is really annoying because I could... I could probably... Uh, I could probably snowman this to the green. <laughs> but I'm not going to use the snowman one, you guys. Um, since I have so many katanas, we are getting a little bit about out of time coming up on it. Um, I'm going to just kind of groove it up here. Let's take a little bit of power off. Do a little bit of curl. Mm, hopefully that's enough to keep it out of the bunker. It is good. Whether I'm on the green or I'm here, I can still make the shot. So that's going to be in here you're seeing low wind. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with a, probably a six point something. So at six something, I really feel like my make percentage is going to be very large. You know, I, uh, it's going to be like maybe a 40, 50 percenter that I can get this to go in with such low wind. So it's just kind of one of the things that I don't let a hole get me down. Uh, I come to the next hole. I know I can keep playing the way this, the same way, the same methods that I'm using, and just look at the very next hole as a fresh new start and a chance to get those trophies back immediately. And again, I can get a little bit on the raw end of the deal with uh, some of the replays that I have to play against. So it's nice to take advantage of opportunities when they arise. So I am more towards min club here. Let me see. how oh, it's almost right at min, which is right around three per ring. I'm a little in on that. I am going to go at least two rings here. So shade more. And there you have it. So, keep that in mind. Uh, you saw my back spin there. It was roughly two. I did about three per ring. Now, whether or not, for whatever reason, uh, this is true, uh, I want to touch on this just a tad. I'm going to open a couple chests until I get another gold. Tsunami, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have not gotten any level 7s like that on Tour 11 in about a week. So I almost wonder if you get to a point where you get enough from a certain Tour that they just don't show up for a while. Or if it's just, you know, luck of the draw. Because I got a whole bunch for about a week straight just by bulk opening the chest. And then all of a sudden, for the last week, I haven't got any. Like, not literally not one. I'm not even exaggerating. So, uh, it's just one of those weird things. And for some reason, like, the silver chest has just been exploding with, you know, Tour 7 cards. It's not all the time. But uh, from time to time, you'll just see, like, I'll get all these cards, and it's just awesome. But then you go through a dry, dry spell and won't see him for two weeks. It's crazy. It's crazy, the logic. I just can't make any sense of it. So, I am going to end the tutorial on this hole. Hopefully we can get, you know, another shootout hole. I just wanted to focus on a little bit of gameplay here. Just a little bit. And you see what I'm doing kind of with my hops? Um, I'm trying to visualize the fourth bounce. And a little bit of a run out. And, uh, you know, I'm going to underplay just ever so slightly to know that this ball is going to be in the fairway. Like, I just know that it's going to be in the fairway. So I'm being very cautious to not over pull. You know, I'm under pulling even. You know, I'm playing very cautious. I know this is a downhill shot, and I can go easily five or six rings. Like, I know I can do this. But you saw me probably go three to four, 
just kind of under pour uh, because I don't need to get every last bit of fairway here. Now, there is going to be situations that you might, uh, but they're going to be so rare. We're, we're going to need to get that win that we got last time on the second shot to even, you know, consider what I just did a mistake. Like any other wind, and you're good. You'll just be able to beat it way up into that third fairway and get almost to the end of it. And here you are seeing a little bit of, uh, you know, another challenging wind. So let's talk about this. So first off, you know, I'm going to use these three spins that I was kind of talking about before. We're going to point up in this direction, and we are going to go ten rings. And as you see, going into that tenth ring requires some power. So you're going to see me add ever so slightly that power. And what do you see me do? I'm countering that wind as well. Oh boy. Got a little aggressive, a little overzealous with how much I was countering. Um, plus I shanked it left. So you see I was getting very close there. So I do recommend countering it, but maybe just be a little bit more cautious because you did see that I was kind of staying away from the right rough. But you want to make sure that that second bounce doesn't hit the right rough. Let's just say, for instance, I tap that right rough on my second bounce. Well, I'm barely enough uh, to get there if it's into the wind. And if I get a real bad wind and hit that rough on the second hop, then I can't even get there. So you do want to be a little bit cautious and you saw me basically do as much as I could, and you know I did shank it left too, uh, to almost put it in that bunker there. But look how much I was able to get it down that fairway. It's really nice. And let's talk about this again, because you know I'm more towards, and there you're seeing that other bounce that I say I try to avoid. So what I try to do is I try to land it a little bit short of that. You see right into this fringe, you need to avoid hitting the green on your second hop. And again, I'm not going to do any backspin. Now, let's talk about this correction. So at mid-club, I'm going to play it more like min-club, maybe even a little bit less. So I'm not even going to go five rings, which would be 1.3 per ring. I'm going to go even less than five rings. So that's the first thing I want to mention. Next thing I want to mention is I might just try to counter it ever so... Ah, of course I hit a great ball. Why wouldn't I? So again, make sure that that second bounce hits the fringe, and sure enough, there you're seeing it, to the right, I shanked it right. In the end, the reason I'm not using any backspin, I want to make sure that it has enough momentum to just reach the hole. And one of the mistakes some guys do, it's not necessarily a mistake, um, because you still end up tying, but uh, is you'll see guys, they'll put backspin on it, and then they'll use like a different landing zone. They'll use uh, backspin, and then they'll kind of go for that more of that green bounce. So they'll, they'll land it higher up in that fairway, whereas I'm landing it more towards the back, the back half of the fairway. This is the method that I really like. As you can see, you can just you know, tear apart this hole, especially when you execute your shot and actually hit perfect ball like I can't. But, uh, let's go to the par 3 shootout. And, let's get to that green course, since we haven't got that shootout. Well, either that or we could do another one of the haunted haunted shots I'd be okay with that I wonder if it has any of the Christmas par threes probably not this is funny because I haven't actually seen I heard so many guys say that they were getting Christmas shootouts or not shootouts but holes and I haven't seen one yet so that's interesting of course we'll get this hole again oh this is a dead giveaway okay so you saw he was already on the spin even though he hadn't applied it and it hasn't even gotten to a shot. This is an obvious replay. Now, you're seeing very similar wind. 
that, than we saw last time. So remember what I said uh, that I did last time. Uh, you know, I played at least 10% extra wind here. So you're seeing a 10 mile per hour. So if you would, with your Goliath, whatever, I don't know what your accuracies are, what clubs you're using, um, but I do about 10% more. So mine's at 100% accuracy. And there you're seeing an underplay. Should be a relatively easy shot to, to win. Um, you know, there's a couple approaches. You could just go for the win and just, you know, just hit kind of a ridiculous shot to just take it from them. Or you can still play the shot, um, which I'm going to go for the second method. And again, since it's downwind, I'm going to play more of the the two the two backspin that you saw me do on the first one. I'm going to do more or less that. Um, but the same thing that I was just mentioning before with my corrections. So there's ten. You now I'm going to go be a little on the cautious side. Uh, a little bit of curl. And there we're landing our spot. We're taking the hill, and we just missed it again on that. So I can't quite groove that hill to where it comes down and shoots down towards the hole. But you saw me do three really good shots on this. So I like your guys' odds. Um, like I said, um, if you get a headwind, take off some of that backspin that you see me putting on. Uh, you don't need it to be, uh, you know, two. You can even, if it's straight into the wind, you can use zero. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to subscribe. Um, and of course, as always, you know, feel free to share, share my videos too. Um, that's the only way that you know they get out there is by that. And uh, aside from that, uh, any other comments or questions, feel free to uh, post those in the video as well. And uh, good luck with your uh, Tour 9 progress.